Greetings everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're here, we're gonna go ahead and assume that you've seen part one where we listed the pros and cons of the overhook and underhook sides. We're gonna also assume that you've seen part two where we talk about our primary attacking strategy from the underhook side with the top side body triangle and how it's best to respond when our opponent tries to switch sides, which would put us on the overhook side with a bottom side body triangle. And now here in part three, we're gonna cover the flip side of that coin and talk about what our primary attacking strategy should be from the overhook side with the top side body triangle triangle and how it's best to respond when our opponent tries to switch sides to put us on the underhook side with a bottom side body triangle. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and let's dive into the video. The primary strength of the overhook side is our ability to lock in a full rear naked choke. However, if our opponent has their primary defensive hand in place, it pretty much shuts down the majority of our offense and frees up our opponent's second hand to be used to help free their lower body. But again, they can only do these fancy tricks with their secondary arm if they have their primary hand in place. If not, we can threaten to strangle very quickly. So it's very important from the overhook side that we win the grip fight. There are situations from the underhook side where it's almost beneficial to be losing the grip fight because it makes it easier to transfer to that cross grip. But from the overhook side, it's essential that we win this grip fight. And a good way to do that is just hide our strangle hand from our opponent by taking this deep lat grip here and not allowing them to access our thumb. It's the same lat grip that we use from the underhook side to facilitate the switch to the overhook side. And like we talked about previously, as we're switching, we can just let our hand flick out from our opponent's armpit and go right into a fully locked rear naked choke. But if we try and shoot the choke or maybe we're just feeling like it's not gonna work, we're gonna switch back to the underhook side. But when making the switch, it's absolutely crucial that we stay behind our opponent's elbow to prevent their back from going to the mat. And we talked about how Gordon likes to use this claw grip here from the overhook side with a bottom side body triangle to make sure he controls his opponent's elbow. And he'll use that same grip here to initiate that hard bridge into his opponent, forcing him to turtle. And because because his opponent does not want to turn belly down, Gordon's able to shoot in that underhook and find himself now attacking from the underhook side with a top side body triangle. And now we just reboot the system that we talked about in part two. And you can see this is a very common theme when attacking from the overhook side. We start with that deep lat grip and go for a choke. And if that doesn't work, we need to take some kind of grip on our opponent to make sure they can't get their elbow to the mat. And again, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot in this video because this is the same grip that we saw Ethan use when his opponent was escaping from the overhook side with a bottom side body triangle. And Gordon uses that grip here after a failed choke attempt to reestablish his underhook. But the main theme that keeps coming up over and over again from the overhook side is that we really have to make sure our opponent's chest cannot face the ceiling. Because even if we have a fully locked rear naked choke from the overhook side and our opponent's chest is facing the ceiling, that most likely means that their chin is not aligned with our elbow and our choke is turning into more of a crack. Rank. And at the highest levels, people are most likely not going to tap and it will result in them escaping. And here, Ethan, I think displays very good knowledge of these ideas that we've talked about, where we start with that deep lat grip from the overhook side and is really making it very difficult for his opponent to get his back to the mat. And as his opponent is trying to turtle, Ethan is shooting that lat grip deeper and deeper. And he actually switched himself from a top side body triangle to a bottom side body triangle. So that way, when he flips over to the underhook side, he is now attacking from the underhook side with a top side body triangle. So I think a pretty common theme is you try a choke from the overhook side, and if it doesn't work, you use it to transition back to the underhook side. Now, one good way to make sure you win the grip fight is to take that deep lat grip to hide your hand. And another great way, which I think is relatively controversial in the jujitsu world, is to use double overhooks so you have two strangle arms. As it seems like a lot of people use double overhooks from the overhook side with the top side body triangle. I believe this is the case because a major weakness of the overhook side is that our opponent often has an easier time freeing their lower body. But that top side body triangle offers a very secure way of securing our opponent's lower body. So as long as we can force our opponent towards the turtle position, it's going to be a relatively safe thing for us to take out our underhook because our opponent is not able to bring their chest towards the ceiling. And as we take out our underhook and begin to threaten the strangle with the top arm, it often leads to a 
perfect alignment of our opponent's chin to our elbow. And if they do decide to continue to turtle position, it's often going to lead to a very strong finish. But again, this is contingent upon us staying behind our opponent's elbow and forcing their chest down towards the mat. And often we do this by using our other arm as kind of a kickstand that makes it very, very difficult for our opponent to bring their back to the mat. And if they really don't want to go to turtle position, again, we take this opportunity to shoot in our underhook and start attacking from the underhook side with a top side body triangle. Now, if we're on the overhook side with a top side body triangle and our opponent were to switch sides, that would put us on the underhook side with the bottom side body triangle. And this is not ideal because the underhook side is really good at preventing our opponent from clearing our bottom hook. But now our bottom hook is on the ground. So now if we lose upper back exposure, which is a relatively easy thing for them to achieve from the underhook side, we've now lost the back. And on top of that, one of the main attacking benefits from the underhook side is our ability to use our legs to trap our opponent's secondary arm. But with the bottom side body triangle, our leg is trapped by the ground. Now you may be able to get away with freeing your feet and then going right into trapping your opponent's arm. But again, this is not ideal to have our body triangle on the bottom when attacking from the underhook side. Now, if you're slick as the referee sets you, you just say, yeah, I had this top side body triangle all along. And you hope he gives you the thumbs up. But if we do get stuck with that bottom side body triangle, it really does diminish the control we have with our lower body. So because our control with the lower body is compromised, we really have to make sure we stay behind our opponent's elbow and prevent their back from coming to the mat. And because we're on the underhook side, it's a good time to threaten a choke with that top arm and basically it's just the same thing we talked about from the overhook side, where we take out our underhook and use it as a kickstand behind us, really forcing our opponent to go belly down. And if they do go belly down, congratulations, you're probably going to win. But as long as you stay behind their elbow, the worst case scenario is that they don't go belly down and you reestablish your underhook. An example of how this might play out is from the overhook side with the top side body triangle, we start out with that deep lat grip, but we're not able to get the choke. So then making sure we stay behind our opponent's top elbow, we switch to double overhooks and threaten the choke with the top arm, using our other arm as a kickstand trying to encourage our opponent to turtle, but they don't take the bait. So we shoot in our underhook and go to our primary attacking sequence from the underhook side with the top side body triangle, where we trap our opponent's arm and then work to get the one-handed choke from the underhook side. But if that's proving to be difficult, we go back to that deep lat grip and use it to switch sides while we flick our wrist out from our opponent's armpit, giving us a super deep shot on a rear naked choke from the overhook side, allowing us to cinch in the choke for the win. So that now completes the three-part series on attacking the back. So now you should have an idea of how the overhook side and underhook side work in combination to control and ultimately submit your opponent. And in this three-part series, we only talked about the rear naked choke. So if this has improved your success rates with the rear naked choke, please consider liking and subscribing so I can continue making videos for you all. Appreciate the support and we'll see you in the next one.